Okay, we're back to tying flies. Now, um, most of the most of the dry flies I tie are spinners and emergers because they work. They work. What I mean, it's it's amazing how easier a fish will take an emerger versus a a a high sitting fly like this right here. But I think that that um, getting a fish to take a high sitting fly like this is, is pretty awesome. That's about how hard it is, especially on the Delaware. So I think this year I'm going to be tying a whole bunch of these these flies and these this style of fly with this wing and a hackle at the bottom. Then if I get frustrated, I'll probably just trim it off <laughs> on the water. But I'm going to go out there trying to get them get them to eat a high sitting fly like this. Why, why, why do fish take a, a, a low sitting fly more than a high sitting fly? You know, I, who knows? I mean, I mean, uh, my theory and probably other people's theories is that when it's sitting high, they're not really sure if it's going to take off. It's almost like, oh, I'm too late because it's sitting so high at any point in time they could take off. That's why in, on the Delaware, you rarely see a fish eat a, eat a caddis because they're always bouncing. So, they, they just don't want to take the chance of going up there, and it's not there. Um, and I think that, that um, you know, expending energy and then missing the fly is, is big for fish, especially if they want to get big. So they like to, they, they like the emergers, the ones they know they can't take off, and they like the dead ones that they also can't take off, obviously. But these are always nervous about it. It's always tough to get them to get one of these things. But I think if, the presentation is good and it's just floating down real nice. They should take it. And that's the key, I think, is getting the presentation good so that they take, they take one of these high sitting flies. So we're going to be trying that a lot this year. And this one is, it's a late season fly, but um, we're going to tie it now uh, because I'm tying up a bunch of them just to get the, get the wing right. So it's a feather wing. It's a sulfur. This is on a size 16. This is the hook I'm using here. And um, the reason I'm going to be tying a lot of these feather wings is because I got uh, geez, 100 of these things, 100 of these necks, these white necks. Just, I mean, I can't even tell you. I got a box over there, a box filled with these things. And this, the bottom, is fairly useless. Um, it's fairly useless. You really can't use anything. You really can't use that much with this stuff, too. I mean, maybe some streamers or something. But um, but the bottom, really the only thing you can use it for is, is is wings. So, you know, you get a couple of these like this. Just, just tear off a handful. And you want to look for the straight ones or the ones going in different directions. Those are the two you want. You can put the straight ones together and you can put the ones going in opposite directions together. These two I got, these are in opposite directions. And when you put them on, you put them so that they, they go away from each other. And then you don't have to figure eight them to separate them. I'll show you started here. Giorgio Benici, this is the um, this is the really the really um, really thin stuff. I don't know what this is. I think it's like 10-0 or 12-0. It's in yellow. Sometimes it's good with these smaller flies to throw some wax on it. I'm going to put this on. I always start in the back of the eye, if you've seen any of my flies, my fly tying videos. I always start in eye's length back. There's just no reason to start at the eye. I'm going to go halfway and I'm going to go back up. I'm going to leave some room there. Let's see, I put them down. Now you want a you want a decent length of this wing here. Definitely a hook. Definitely a hook. And 
and spin your bobbin. A lot of people talk about spinning your bobbin to make the thread go the other way. When you're looking down on it, you want to spin it uh, counterclockwise. That's how you get it to, to go the right way. When you're looking down on it. So, I don't like it. You can, you can move this wing so easy, and it'll get all screwed up. So, it, just go back, you know, put a few turns on it, look, make sure it's on the top. It, 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 can, it can get moved so easy if you're not careful. See, even that I don't like. I like it high, the the wing. When you're taking your fingers off of it, it can very easily just move on you. Even even when you say, "Oh yeah, I just I just moved it up and it looks the same," <laughs> it's just because you take your fingers off and it, and it moves again. Uh, Cock de Leon, that's what I'm using. Man, I, I try and use like some some whiter colored ones. If you look at this, the tips right there, white. If you look at this one right here, and these would be in the same package too most of the time. That's a really dark speckled one. See that? So you can use these for, for certain things, maybe a coffin or something like that, but use these for sulfurs and Hendrickson's are good. Or just use microfibits. Microfibits are fine. I mean, they're great. I mean, they're strong. But if you're looking for a natural tail, Cochleon, or even honestly, what I probably should have did was um, you can even go back to this neck right here and use one of these these big ones right here. That would work. They're just kind of thin, so you want to use a bunch more. To at least twice is the amount that you would normally put on. Like with microfibits, you'd probably use four or three um, or five, somewhere around there. Well, you got to use a good eight or ten if you're going to use the um, the neck because it's just they're just thinner fibers. And we're going to cut this off. And biot. You want a turkey biot, not a goose, because the turkey biot's gonna be longer, it's gonna be a lot easier to work with. See the biot how it curves up? You want to turn it against that curve, meaning you want the outside of it facing you. Because if um, if you put it the other way, you're not going to get that that barbed body look that you want. Then you want to look at how I have to go back here. Here, I want to make sure that that thing's smooth. Get it real close. And then on buyouts, I use super glue. On peacock curl, I do not. On the eyes, you know, the stripped eyes. I don't use super glue, but this one you can't go over the top with resin because you have that barb. Now, um, the one tough part about this one here is is that it's hard to get that barb. The barb, since it's on the back side of the fly, it's tough to get that barb to go. far up. You really can't get it to go much further than that. Maybe if you... And what's going to happen is you're going to trap the, the wing and it gets all screwed up. So that's about the best you can do. But that's alright. That's not bad.
And I just put it on there with, with three turns. Two turns probably even works too, but it's not worth doing any more than that. You're just going to bulk it up. Um, this is... This is a, just a whiting. What is, what's the color? What is this? I think they just call it white. Nah, it's white, basically. It's just a whiting. It's a grade three. It's a half. See this? It's a half saddle. Let me tell you something about saddles. Unless you're you're tying for an army of uh, fly fishermen, uh, you don't you don't need a full saddle. You don't even really need a saddle, but. Um, if you get a half saddle, it'll last you forever. Now, I, I strip, strip a good amount off. And one of the keys to making the, the hackle really stay this way and not get too screwed up is, is that you want to make that first turn to be on the stem. So don't tie it in right up against, don't tie it right up against the, the fibers there. It, you know, leave a leave a good amount, like a like a sixteenth of an inch, inch or even an eighth inch. And this is why we only tie in the biot with like two turns, because you're going to tie this in. And it's, you're essentially tying in both of them at the same time, so it's just saving turns. So we go up, and now we, I post this. If you see here, what happened was well, since I left the eye clean there, now I can post this, and at the same time, I'm 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 making the the body and the the eye part flush, you know, at one level, which is what you want. So we want the the. The, the, the nice side to be facing forward, which can be tough, but if, you, if you're careful, you can do it. Probably only two turns is behind the wing and two turns in front is all you're going to need. Make sure you're real close to those, those wings. Now, I do this with every, with every hackle fly. It, it it doesn't make it look neat, but it definitely makes it last, and that's, I fold this back. I do two turns to tie it in. I just get in here, and I try and fold everything back. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna make it, it's gonna make it last more. I mean, is it a little bit messy? It is messy, but I don't care. I want length. I'm not trying to win, you know, a beauty contest here. So fold it back if you're going to be, if you're going to be fishing them. No head cement if you want, you can put head cement on it. Just, just, if you've ever seen my videos, I just don't do it anymore. If I'm fishing a fly, it's not worth it. I just break that off. And I bring these wings back. If you notice, I didn't figure eight them. You don't need to. When they're splaying the opposite way, um, they just they just stay that way. Now, since I pulled everything back, the hackles they get they get caught on the biots. So, just to see what it's looking like, you can bring it forward, but honestly, it doesn't matter too much. Well, that's it. So it's going to be a high sitting, high sitting fly. You need some real good presentation. Soft rod helps. A lot of people like to use these really fast rods. Uh, yeah, I mean the fast rod is, is good for streamers, but it's not good for dry flies. Seems to be one. Yeah, I don't think it matters. But that folding it back there definitely uh, can make some some. Am I 
me see if I can show you here. It could make some things go some weird ways, but it's going to make it last longer. It's a little tricky to get used to it, but I mean, I think you can see. It still looks good. It's definitely hackles all the way around nice. You get good at 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 pulling all the fibers back. It still looks it still looks really good. Definitely still looks good. All right. Feather winged sulfur. This is a true dry fly. It's not an emerger dry fly. It's not a uh, spinner dry fly. It's a true dry fly, high sitting. You take it out there like this. If um, if you can't get them to eat it, then just trim a little bit off the bottom and and pull the rest up with some uh, some some floating. You can pull the hackles straight up. All right.